हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स a nice windy day sometimes i may shake a bit <laughs> we live in a dream this is not as real as it appears it's all a dream dream like we take all this much too serious it's a useful dream we came in this dream to gain experience to learn to grow to outgrow to let consciousness the experience expand we can go about it playfully no matter what in the so called external world is happening and yet when we look at the world now it's so full of fear fear still it's there <clears throat> my neighbor from belgium she said she was thinking of going there and staying there for some time and her mother told her okay you can come but i will go to a beach house of my friend because uh, i don't want to stay in the same house <laughs> she's too afraid too afraid that maybe she's going to infect her it's amazing the intensity of the fear it's just a dream <laughs> all that can happen to us is that we are waking up from this dream <laughs> why be afraid at all <clears throat> being aware that it is not as real as it appears gives detachment and we can relax and with that detachment we can go from moment to moment from day to day playfully joyously getting richer for the experience with every moment without getting so worked up about all the details that are happening at the base there is peace and in that peace there is joyousness it's never absent we just have to learn not to cover it up all the time it helps to remind yourself it's not as real as it appears it's temporary you're here for some time playing this role but actually what you are is not affected by it cannot be hurt it's just getting the benefit of the wealth of experience that we are getting in this dream hmm. what an amazing story <clears throat> okay my friends is there anyone who would like to come in please come in hello yerna hello dial mm -hmm. nice to see you nice to I see you listen <laughs> about um, uh my friends present me special piece of wood is a uh, lot of nails like this 
Your sound is not quite clear. Uh, so this uh, board of nails is for what to stand on it? <laughs> yes, yes. Are you change the uh, Now I don't hear anything at all. <laughs> now, now can you hear me? Now can I can you hear, hear you. Now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, this is better, yeah? Yeah, this is better. This is better. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, and I try to stand in on it, but it's really a lot of pain, really sharp nails. But some yeah. of my friends can stand in 15 minutes. Even Nelly recently was standing seven minutes. And I am only two minutes maximum. <laughs> so, how to use this practice and how to be successful? <laughs> <laughs> you want to become a fakir and then sleep on a yeah, board yeah. of nails, huh? <laughs> I'm understanding, I'm understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've never done any of this, so I'm maybe not a good person to ask. Uh, why do you want to do that? Um, I find out it's kind of challenge to absorb the pain and yeah. go through it. And yeah. I think if I do that, some deep sankaras come up very quickly and I experience some strong emotions. Mm. So, and if I able to do that, then maybe I will uh, er eradicate such sankaras. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, this is a bit far-fetched that by standing on a board of nails that you can erase <laughs> some scars. Overcoming the physical pain, of course, uh, that uh, is a very useful exercise. <laughs> I'm sorry, Natasha, you should turn off your microphone. You are interfering. <laughs> Dial, can you say something? Then you come back. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Ah, yeah, right. But you were uh, gone from my picture. Now you are back. <laughs> Anyhow, in in the Middle Ages, on the in the Christian way, many monks have been doing such things doing very harsh things to their body, wearing torture belts with nails sticking into their body and, uh, and doing that kind of stuff, or wearing hair shirts that were itching all over all the time, <laughs> just as a challenge to somehow overcome the body. A few people with a very strong will have been successful with this harsh treatment and they really, it helped them to go all the way through the physical attachment. But many people, they just uh, started to become very bitter in course of the process. And that doesn't necessarily help to expand consciousness. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I cannot give you from my experience any advice how to go about it. If you feel that you have to do this, that you want to do this, then stand on it as long as you can easily stand it and don't make a competition with your friends or with, or with anybody. But then slowly, slowly you may increase it and it may help you that when you stand, when you have pain and you are capable in the pain, to relax instead of getting all tense, then uh, that is a very powerful yogic exercise. Usually we have already enough pain in the body, so we can do that whenever you have pain. <laughs> but if you want to do so, you can do so. I'm not the right person to ask for technical details. I never did any such things. <laughs> okay, you keep on trying. <laughs> keep on yeah, like. be, be gentle about it. Don't don't be mm -hmm. harsh about it. Huh? Yeah. 
I will. <laughs> I cannot be, be very uh, hard to myself. <laughs> Some people easy, but right. I'm. Yeah, I'm, yeah, but don't think that uh, because your friend can uh, stand that that much time, you also have to stand that much time. <laughs> Go give it your own time if you feel that you have to do that. It's certainly, I'm sure, it's certainly stimulating extremely strongly all these pressure points in the in the foot, which in turn is stimulating the whole body. <laughs> the key to overcome things is that you learn to relax in tense situations instead of getting tense physically. So try with relaxing. <laughs> okay, okay. That's all I can say. Right. <laughs> okay, thank you, Werner. Thank you. You're welcome. Hario. 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 Anyhow, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as a general practice. <laughs> Anybody who wants to do such things, okay, fine for them. I mean, there are tapasvis, they are doing tremendous things to themselves. And if they are capable to relax, then for them, it's not more a tremendous thing. A lot of people think they are doing tremendous things to themselves. But if they are not getting that detachment, and if they are not learning to relax in, in the tenseness, in the pain, then they can develop a certain strength of will. They can collect a certain amount of power doing these things, but that doesn't necessarily loosen up and sweeten up their character. And then that increased willpower, that increased power may not necessarily turn into a constructive, into an expansive direction. So, if one uses this kind of stuff, one has to be careful that it develops in the good direction, not that we just developing a harsh character <laughs> capable after that to fight our way through in this world, but remain totally locked in our little me, me, me bubble. The point is that we let go of that. And if one feels like doing strong things like this, be careful to relax, to be playful about it, and then it might be fine. <laughs> okay, is there anybody else who would like to come in? Hariom Varna. Hariom, Hariom, Maria. My question is about um, uh, healing. Healing. Yes, um, I've experienced a lot of healing in the body um, since I started meditating, particularly since I started, I mean, since I started bioenergy meditation. Yeah. And I had deep healing, for example, of the digestive system without thinking about it at all. I haven't even considered that I, I had very slow digestions for many years, acidity and so on, but I was so used to it that it was like a surprise when, when I realized it was healing. Mm. And another aspects, I can see that my body uh, has a line, the back, the, lots of uh, healing without me asking anything consciously about it. Yeah. And now the question that comes up for me is about my gums. I have receding gums. Mm -hmm. You know what receding gums are? Yes, yes. Uh, the, yeah. And uh, my mother has them, my grandmother has them, my auntie has them. I, I just had the feeling that it's a kind of female uh, 
something to do with the, in the female line in my, my family. And it is not, uh, doesn't give me pain, but it, it, it makes some of my teeth uh, feel quite weak. Uh, yeah. It looks almost as if they are going to fall. And I was just wondering recently about what well, can I can I do something consciously about it? Um, I don't feel like going to a doctor, like getting a treatment, you know, something more on the physical. Right. But I just wonder whether um, there is something in the process of meditation that could be helpful for for helping the healing. As you have experienced uh, with other things, the more you get balanced out, the more the body has the tendency to put itself right. But of course, then there is also the genetic influence there. And if you say it was very usual in your family, the tendency is more that this is happening. Actually, this time I have some experience, not like with, with the mail board. <laughs> <laughs> Because when I was in the cave, I, I felt that my gums were receding. And actually, I just uh, spontaneously, I started to do a very simple exercise and they started to grow in again. And, and all that I did was like with, the, with that part of the hand, mm -hmm. <laughs> rub like this and so I, like this, uh, but uh, over the not on directly on the gums uh, through. Okay, like this. Through yes, yes, yeah. and and quite vigorously, the up and down. <laughs> the, then you you will feel how it how they are stimulated, and then you can with your mind help also that uh, you feel yourself into that and some somehow with your feeling encourage the gums to grow in again. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> what a lovely synchronicity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah. In the beginning, um, uh, go soft, because otherwise you're your tissues will hurt, but uh, it's getting used to it. And after that, you can go about it quite vigorously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I thought about the feeling. What you are saying is like, because if you don't do that, it's very difficult to feel the gums. Yeah, yeah, that helps. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Verna, because last, I have had a, such a wonderful week. Um, and I feel it's very connected to that process started when I was asking you about uh, the quietness, the difficulty to, to just be quiet, experience quietness without strong emotions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like last week it, it's gone deeper. And it has made me much more aware of when irritation arises. Yeah. And I realized that the big dramas always get fed by that irritation, which sometimes is very subtle. Um, and I was not that aware before of how I was so used to it, yeah. that I was feeling interactions with that irritation. So this week has been, since that kind of reframing, you help me to do of the, the quietness is good is good <laughs> yeah, yeah. so i don't feel the need to do anything about it <laughs> yeah nice nice and i i even almost like protecting it you no know? like saying well let's embrace the peace and mm. and it's been a, a very very nice soft week um, productive and not feeling the need for any strong emotion which is i feel what was somehow staring up uh, many of these strong negative emotions. Right, right. And the more you get rooted in that peace, the earlier you catch the things when they start to rise. <laughs> the subtler. Because <clears throat> when our emotions come up, when our thoughts come up first, there is just a pure consciousness, peace, the joyous peacefulness. And then out of that 
it's like it starts to form a bit like a cloud, a whole field that uh, starts to form where we can start to think and uh, have emotions about it. And then slowly it's getting crystallized and the thoughts come clear and the emotions come up and then it starts to express itself. But first it's there as a potential, like a cloud in consciousness that is forming. And the more you are coming back to that peacefulness, the earlier you can detect that movement and when you can catch it when it's still in that in that cloud form that as a potential of a whole field that could form and come up then you can just dismiss it again as it comes up that you don't even have to get into the emotions and the thoughts and all that comes sometimes you may also consciously let that cloud uh, exist and form <laughs> into emotions, into thoughts, fine. But then the, the more you are aware, the more you are having the freedom, whether you just want to dismiss it as it comes there as a potential. And then as long as it's on that potential level, it's easily discarded if we can see it. Thank you. Yes, you know where where is is quite um, helpful um, the practice with emails. I've noticed because when I leave enough space between the receiving and the response, mm -hmm. it allows me to do that. More of what you are describing now is to feel what is arising when I am responding. Yeah. And then sometimes it's better to hold <laughs> yes. or not. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Verna. Thank you all. You're thank welcome. You. Hari Om. Hari Om. Hari Om. Is there anybody else who would like to come? Hello, Warner. Hello, Klaus. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you could elaborate on the pain body because uh, uh, I often feel restless and then I think, why do I feel restless? And I think it's because it's pain in the body. It's, it's pain in the stomach. It's like it's a emotional pain. It's not physical, pain, but it's just like electricity electricity in the in the veins it just feels like like that so when you were talking about uh, standing on those uh, <laughs> those spikes or what <laughs> i was thinking okay let's maybe we can uh, can explore this to see what this is <laughs> so you think if you create more physical pain then you can no. easier do it with no, the I, mental pain <laughs> i'm not going in that direction i have enough with my own pain so i don't want to yeah. get more Right. But right, you can say there is something like a pain body. I mean, there is not really a pain body, but we form a pain body in our psyche, with our psyche. In a way, we form also our body with our psyche, with our consciousness. And when there from the subconscious old stuff comes up that is boiling then that may create a lot of subtle pains and when you become aware you say often you are restless and you think it's because of subtle pains like this but when you become aware of those pains then you can do two things Either you just resist and try to fight it, and then uh, in a way, most of the time it doesn't work and it gets worse. Or then you can accept, okay, I haven't chosen to feel that pain right now, but it's there. So let it be there and accept it, that it's there and relax in it. And that relaxing in that subtle pain can help you to focus your attention extremely strong in the timelessness of the now, which in turn helps you 
to go deeper, to go to the source prior to that pain. And from there, it's very easily dismissed again. So that those subtle pains can be used to help you to go deeper. If we, if we don't resist, if we learn to relax in it and just watch what happens when we relax, then it's like it helps you to drive your attention deeper into your own source. I, I also uh, work with, with social care here. So uh, I get a lot of different situations from people. And one of them was going to, to uh, like a trauma treatment. Yeah. And, uh, and he said that he had to, he, he was all out because he had gone through some very painful uh, memories from his, his childhood. Yeah. And then he, he said the way that they treated the trauma was that he had to describe his trauma uh, to every detail and, and it was brought up. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think it, it didn't seem like they did anything more with it. But I was just thinking, is it really need, do we really need to go through everything like oh, try to search for it and, and look into it and, and dig and, and go all the way into those unconscious pains or is it just to to sit and be with it and find the natural acceptance in it is it like needed to dig and dig and dig yeah. i'm not saying that what you're describing what that person did is useless for many people it may be helpful to be in a group like this to have the courage to come out with it to talk about it to become more aware of it. That doesn't mean uh, because of that it's gone, but at least it may put them in touch with something which they otherwise may not find. And then from there they can work on it. But then of course, then it's a question of letting that stuff go, not simply coming it up and uh, coming up and talking about because there one can go start also to do a bit mental games with it and get attached to those stories and instead of letting them go in a new way, hold on to them. You ask me whether it's necessary. No, I don't think it's necessary to go and dig like this because it's a jungle and there is no limit to it. <laughs> you can get mm -hmm. totally lost. I mean, <laughs> the subconscious, it's a jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and we can, we can go on and on and analyze and analyze and analyze forever. Be at peace here now, as good as you can. And then when things come and disturb that peace, then we have to accept, okay, I have to give it attention. If it's too strong, uh, some things may come up and as they come up, you see them you, and you let them go and they go. There is not much attachment there. There is not much vitality locked into it, but some things may be extremely strong and they come up and then you can analyze if you feel the need of it, if you feel that you need to know more about it. But you can also just observe what is it doing to your experience right now and learn to relax as it comes, as it creates tensions, as it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. Just observe what it is doing right now and in that way learn to detach from it. And in that way actually that vitality that is locked into such situation starts to dissipate. It doesn't mean if you do that one time after that it's gone, but it's getting weaker. It, the same thing may come back another time and another time and another time, but gradually it loses its power and eventually you're free of it. Yeah, I, I had a very, a uh, very good experience yesterday. Uh, I was in a, a group, like a sharing group, and then we were, it was just sitting 10 minutes in silence. And uh, suddenly someone was speaking about what, they, what the silence did for them. And uh, she said like, it, it helped her to, 
to get to zero again how how, her, how she was thinking about other people mm. and it it struck me really good because i in that moment i was able to see how i had projected on other people mm. uh, all these things so it like became a a flash of light coming in there so after that it's been much easier just to 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 uh, to see what you were saying earlier that it's it's forming like a potential of a cloud with thinking and feeling and it's just doesn't feel good to go that way anymore so it's just dismissed very early in the creation of it so i think with as i see it these talks and eating others it's just very good to to get some new lights on your thinking like it it uh, it puts some new light which you can just see oh this is false this is not this is not true sure sure i'm not saying anything in any way against such groups whatever helps you to be more self conscious not ego conscious but self conscious mm -hmm. that yeah. is good and if it helps that you talk in a group like this to become more aware of the mechanisms but with the idea that as it comes up that you learn to deal with it that uh, it doesn't form new attachments but that you mm -hmm. learn to let the stuff go as you have described now then definitely it will be helpful yeah. it's just good to always remember it's uh, we are doing that not to somehow getting more knowledgeable about our subconscious <laughs> about this about that it's to bring stuff more cl clearly into your consciousness that you with the increased clarity has an easier time to let it go yeah yeah definitely that that outward thing is is like the jungle it's just getting more and more complex so mm. just finding this peace you know it's it's enough to know the right direction so uh, right, right. so i think it's a very good distinction you make there from from this and and i think also with with feeling this uh, thinking and, and emotion going on it's just so grateful for the peace that it's just just here and it just feels good to to return to it uh, again right. <laughs> sure yeah Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Hari Om. Hari Om. Is there anyone who would like to come in? Please come. Hi, Werner. It's Udi. Hello, Udi. I haven't, I, see, haven't I, seen you for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was so busy for the last month. But uh, at least we have this uh, YouTube that we can go on. Yeah. But I want I want to continue with what uh, maybe Klaus have uh, start to speak about. Yeah. And we mentioned many times uh, the need to let go, to relax, mm -hmm. and not to hold things. Yes. But I must mention personally that there is uh, one place that I'm always uh, fail. In that, and this is a, um, a sense of, of loss, a sense of uh, missing for very uh, dear persons yeah. that I lost 50 years ago. I see. And whenever I deal with that, the sense of, lo of uh, losing or missing is always uh, returned back and... It's painful. It's painful. Still painful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the recommendation, the thought, let it go, bring it to your conscious and see it. And whatever is always return back to this feeling, very maybe primitive feeling of uh, being lose something mm. and cannot hold it. Uh, and the knowledge or the conscious is not helping here. Yeah. Then the next step is when such a thing comes, such feelings come. The, the feeling of loss and looking at it as a tragedy and the pain comes. Then 
accept the pain, embrace the pain, instead of resisting and thinking I shouldn't, I shouldn't feel like this anymore after all this time, and see how it is influencing your experience right now. See what it is doing in your body, that pain right now. And then you can start to relax, relax on that level. Then the old habit is not strengthened because if it's become like a habit that memory comes of a loss and along with that memory comes the pain invariably and as long as you don't deal with it in another way, then in a way it's becoming stronger every time this comes up. But if you decide, okay, now not necessarily analyze the situation, analyze what has happened then, but just see what it is doing right now. Okay, welcome the feeling of loss when it's anyhow coming. Welcome the mental pain that comes out of it and see what it is doing to you physically, how it is really physically manifesting and then start to relax your body. And not simply if you feel in the body it's doing something in your chest or in your belly that you go at that point and try to relax that, but relax everything else. Relax your legs and your arms and your shoulders. And then automatically that physical tension also will gradually disappear. And if you deal with it in that way, then the old habit of that thought comes up, creating an emotion, creating pain is reducing instead of strengthening. Well, but it's always returned back to the same sense of pain. It's not uh, knowing the situation, yeah. uh, having different feeling of sorrow or whatever. It's always returned to pain. Pain, right. Yeah. Accept that pain when it is there and focus on the pain itself. Focus not on what brought that pain about and think, uh, how can I evade that mechanism that brings that pain about, but just be with the pain here now. And start to relax. Instead of fighting it, instead of getting overwhelmed by it, instead of getting irritated by it, instead of resisting, accept and relax. It, it may not go, uh, if it's a strong habit, it may not go from one day to another, but if you deal with it more in that direction, in that way, the habit will get less strong and eventually it stops bothering you. I think that uh, you point a very important thing for me, not to return back to... Um, to the source of the pain yeah. and bring it back every time, but to, to deal with what I accept now and uh, try to stay with that uh, for the moment and not saying, well, this painful, this pain thing is coming from this and that. And uh, by that, bringing back memories or yeah. different stories that I create in my life. But uh, I must mention that I not succeed to do that. Uh, right, even if those thoughts come, and you catch yourself that you're going down that alley and think about it and start the story again. As long as you are not aware that this is happening, you cannot do anything. But when you become aware, ah, ah, there I'm going again, just turn again to the now, to the pain, to the effect of it and deal with that effect and uh, let, let go on that level, relax on that level. It's influencing after the, the whole chain from where it's starting. And gradually, the habit is definitely will get less. You can be sure of that. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, just a curiosity question. You had, you had been so busy. Is your intensive care still overflowed with COVID patients? No, no. The last, uh, the last week or two weeks is uh, dramatically changed. Uh, maybe there is a quarter of uh, people in the intensive care and uh, much less patient in a, totally in Israel, but in my hospital uh, by sure. And uh, I don't know if you know that uh, almost more than 80% of the adult population in Israel is already vaccinated. Yeah. So the, the, there is truly less serious patient now. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there's a big, big change, and uh, the night thing is that it's bring back the sense of hope inside of us, ourselves. It's a big question: what is the sense of this hope? But um, also, it's coming from a difficult uh, period, right? And it's very joyful to to feel it. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it had not directly to do with COVID, but uh, there was just a lot of work in your hospital. <laughs> no, no, it was uh, mainly by, because of the COVID. Oh, but, still, uh, I can still. say that it's it's uh, yeah. still came down very dramatically in the last week or two. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Hopefully for a good day, so we can go back to India. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So far, it doesn't look like the. They always say the next month maybe they open the borders, but so far it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's hope. Yeah. And pray for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hario. Hario. <clears throat> Is there anybody who would like to come? Hario, Werner. Ah, oh, hello, Ben. Hi. <laughs> Hariom, everyone. Greetings from northern Spain, Catalonia. The sun is shining. <laughs> Are you in the same retreat center? Yes, yes. Still living here in this uh, retreat center. There's a community of about uh, 12 to 15 of us running the place. Yeah. And then there's, there are guests uh, coming in and out, some for short term, some longer term, and, and sometimes some bigger events like retreats gatherings, semi-legal gatherings, but it is happening. People <laughs> yeah. come from, Bar from Barcelona <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, we're the resistance. <laughs> yeah, the resistance. <laughs> so, yeah. so don't broadcast it too much. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Don't tell anyone, everyone. <laughs> I'm, 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 not simply gonna... I'm simply putting it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, everyone join the resistance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I have a couple of friends here with me, and uh, my friend uh, Leon would like to ask you a question. Ah, oh, welcome. Yes. Hi, Bernard. Nice meeting you. Hello, Leon. <laughs> and thank you, Ben, for inviting us to join this meeting with you. Um, I would like to ask you something, but maybe giving you a little bit of background. Uh, now I'm 34 years old and in my early 20s, I always been feeling this um, need of help people, uh, help uh, situations or try to figure out solutions to, to some kind of, let's say problems or situations that requires invest energy, of course. And um, at that point, I was not aware that that will become kind of my purpose, which is now I feel my purpose is oriented to help in that open sense of the word. But what I figured out when I was younger was the fact that I was wasting so much energy trying to help people or situations that don't, that didn't want it to be helped. Right. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a lesson, a lesson I already learned and yeah. um, took a while. <laughs> uh, in, yeah, and that was a point. And then I start to be more aware of who wants to be helped or what needs 
or requires that uh, that given of attention. But now I am facing another doubt that maybe you can help me with. And it's the fact now I am discovering maybe situations where people or the situation by, its, by itself is aware that requires some, uh, some help requires and it's aware of that but in a sense of the of the openness to receive the help that is not open to receive help so it's this contrast where where you can tell that there's the need of uh, finding a solution but there is this blocking of not letting help come in so my question is what do you think is the right way to approach that? Should be also something that you need to keep one side waiting for the right moment for the openness to receive help to happen? Or can we somehow uh, let that situation know that, uh, that there's something needs to be adjust to be open to receive the help or I'm exploring that those possible answers, but maybe you can help me with that. <laughs> well, I cannot give you now a blueprint which after that is useful in every situation because every situation is again totally new and unique. <laughs> the but, but as a rule of thumb, learn to listen to your own inner feeling more than thinking about the situation that uh, of course you see the situation and immediately you see chuck, 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 chuck and this and this and this could be done and should be done. But then when that resistance is there, as you have learned, uh, often you cannot do what would be required because that other side is not open to that. And sometimes one has to accept, okay, that openness is not there, they know something should be done, but the openness is not there. And then you may just have to have patience and wait. And you can feel that in yourself when, when, that, when you really deep down from your inner feeling feel now is the moment you can try. And sometimes uh, you can push a little but uh, not much, because if you push too much, then there is the total barrier. Uh, more act from that subtle sense of, of rightness than what you think in your head, what is right and what is wrong about it. If you let yourself be guided more from that, then you will find it gradually easier and easier how to go about it, how to find the right, the right time. And often maybe just accept, okay, it needs to be left at peace for some time until it's like mature to do something about it. The situation has to be ripe for it. <laughs> the people's mind has to be ripe for it. And Deep down, you can feel that. So search more about your inner feeling about the situation than try to figure the proper process out in your intellect. It doesn't mean not to use the intellect. To be reasonable where reasonableness is needed. <laughs> it's not that we have to throw that away, but uh, it has its own level. And if you learn to get guided from your subtle inner feeling, then you go deeper than that reasonable approach. And you will start to uh, just know out from, from inside more and more what is the right thing to do in the right moment. Thank you very much. That's actually very nourishing. <laughs> and it complements what I am uh, growing through, also having this uh, connection with myself, trying to listen a bit more, trying to be more present in myself. It's also 
-hmm. kind of giving space to this uh, to these windows to recognize when mm -hmm. when we can act or interact in mm -hmm. it's more like to be present and trust yeah you 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 are totally agree the totally most agree. important is that we help ourselves <laughs> that, yes. we find that, <laughs> that we find that <laughs> harmony and peace in ourselves and then yes. if we can help others also so much the better but <laughs> as, as long as we are ourselves full of contradiction and tensions then even with the goodwill of helping others we bring also always a lot of tension into it and the more yes. you are in harmony with yourself the more harmoniously you will automatically know what to do in the right situation. I will was, I'm very glad to ask you this. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much. It was very nervous. Are home. Are you Are you home? <laughs> Anybody else from there? Or shall we go to... <laughs> I think we're good. You Thank are you, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still digesting the question and answer from last week, which has been <laughs> yes, uh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> which has been great. So thank you. Thank you. Hari Om. Hari Om. Hari Om. Is there anybody else who would like to come? Please come. The subject we just have been talking about, helping others, is a, a subject that comes always up in, for spiritual people, because of course somewhere there is the idea, if we want to be spiritual, if we want to go deeper, then we have to help others. We are all connected. That feeling that we are separate is an illusion that we have created and hold on to, but we are all connected. But because of that sense of separation, there is a lot of tension in everybody because it's not natural. Natural is to be aware that we are all everything is connected. With that sense of separation, invariably, we are creating tensions in ourselves. And the greatest help for the whole rest of this manifestation we can possibly do is to remove those tensions. That's something we can directly work on. That's one little part in the wholeness where we can directly do something about it. Now, because I'm talking like this, that doesn't mean I say we should not help others. People have different talents. People have different mental makeups. Some may just withdraw and do their practice and go deeper and deeper and being somewhere not interacting much with people, still radiating something that is of great help. And without knowing, without thinking about it, they're helping many other people, simply making peace in themselves. Others are more active and it comes natural to be active, to be with people, to help people. There's, it's wonderful by all means, but it's always good to remind ourselves the most important help we can possibly give to the whole rest of creation is that we learn to be at ease, at peace, rooted in the self. And the more that is there, something so beautiful starts to flow through you that is just influencing everybody and everything we come in contact with. Even if they are not aware of it, they may not be aware 
but still it is doing something. So if somebody feels this is natural to do a lot of external work, external help for people, by all means, continue. Simply don't get lost on that level of helping and helping and doing external things, but always remind yourself the greatest help is to remove my own tensions, to create harmony and peace and joy in myself. And at the same time, if I can externally give a helping hand, so much the better. <laughs> Okay, is there anybody else? We have still quite some time. <clears throat> Let me see how many people are here. <laughs> 40 people, there must be somebody who would like to talk about something. Hi, Venor. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, now I see you also. <laughs> Hello. I'm a sweetheart. Hi. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, beautiful to see you in satsang. It's great. Thank you for that. You're it's welcome. Always, yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting with a few friends here and um, I want to tell something. I always wanted to become a good man, you see? Yeah. And to increase more uh, that I'm quiet and be polite and blah, blah, blah. Yes. But finally, I, I find that the personality is not changing much. <laughs> yeah. And the beautiful thing is, I also find out that there's no problem that it's not changing much. Yeah. <laughs> So I found out I will not become a holy man. You know? No. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> and it is also not necessary. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing. You know? Right, right. And for example, um, I am an impulsive guy. Uh -huh. So sometimes I say things I thought oh, afterwards, oh, this is not the right thing. You see? Mm. So... But it's happened again and again. And it is not a big problem. I must say, I can apologize. And, okay. And I also say sometimes unpleasant things happen. Not a big deal, actually. Yeah. And, and this makes a really relaxation in myself. Right. You know, just if this guy, Moksha, is... I think I die with a few things what I have, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and it is okay, no problem. And that that is a big change. Right. That is a okay. Crazy things I'm sometimes doing, and other people also doing crazy things, but it is not a big problem. Right. And this is what you speak about relaxation. This is a big point. Okay, I do naughty things or strange things sometimes. It is okay. It is okay. Be and I also be around with some people and I hear myself saying and actually it's the same what you always said relax it is okay mm -hmm. it feels shit it yes sometimes it feels shit it is okay mm -hmm. and that gives a relaxation relaxation I did a lot of therapy and unaware you get the idea I am not okay right now yeah later after the therapy maybe then it's okay yeah and now I, I tell the people we can look at some things, but you are okay right now. That's a big change. Right, right. Yeah, and this, you remember me always, if I hear you talk to the people, this is what I get the message. Relax, it is okay right now, not tomorrow, now. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then the funny thing is, then 
simultaneously, simultaneously there comes this uh, wholeness experience, I would say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was doing homes, homeschooling with my boy. Yeah. And I'm sometimes become really uh, angry, you know? Yeah. If, if I, at some point, then, uh, and then, okay, there it happened again. But then if I, okay, sorry, that was too much. And if then the acceptation is there, there is directly stepping out of this personality is happening spontaneously. Right. And this is peace, right? Right. In, in this jungle of personality, <laughs> I did a lot of therapy, a, a little bit change, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but the moksha is still the same. And it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, there, if there are really gross tendencies that always are destructive and creating suffering to, you, to oneself and to others, then of course it's worth to work on that and to change that. But uh, you are right, we don't have to put in front of our nose that ideal of a holy person and hoping that our spiritual progress means I'm getting holier and holier and holier. <laughs> it's also an idea. What you have to become is natural. <laughs> what we have to become is to learn to be at ease and at peace. And actually, the more we are at ease and at peace and in harmony with ourselves, the less we need any rules to live by because it's simply not natural to go out and hurt other people. It's, uh, it's coming out because we are hurting ourselves and are full of tensions. But the more we are at peace, then the less this comes out. And even without thinking that now I'm changing and my person is changing, people may say, oh, you're, get, you're changing, you're getting a better person. <laughs> well, actually, you are get, becoming more aware that you are not a person. <laughs> That's the thing. We can fix the idea of a personality and, and brush it and brush it and brush it and brush it forever, but it's, I'm still that person. That idea is still there. Then uh, slowly we get the idea, now I'm quite spiritual, now I'm quite holy, but, and being very caught up in that delusion. <laughs> well, the person is just the role that I'm playing. And even if it's not a perfectly holy role, so what? You are not that person. And the more you are connecting with that which you really are, the less it matters. But then that identification with the person will not be there and one will not feel like, uh, I want to go out and hurt. Sometimes a hurt may happen unintentionally Sometimes people may also feel hurt because they have their own selfish expectations and we are not going to fulfill them. This cannot be avoided. But that destructive wanting to hurt disappears if we don't identify with the personality. And that's all that is needed, that we are not willfully destructive. <laughs> no, I never was, but yeah. I'm an impulsive guy. So. Yeah. And also there's a lot of tension in the body still somewhere. So if my son then 10,000 times, he or not 10 times, a few times not listening, then I become, rah, 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 listen to me, I'm explaining you, you know, little things, you know. Yes. And if, if, we, if I can be more relaxed with that, and it is, it is what you say, if, if, this pers if you can scrub, scrub this personality, there's no end of it. No end, end of it. Yeah. And I can say, if I'm too much, I, can, I say, okay, sorry, this was too much. So that is not a big deal. Right. But right. exactly what you say, you know, this, um, there's no intention of hurting any, anybody. And if there's some little things, I think I, if I step in the grave, 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 uh, grave. <laughs> I, <step, laughs> I will be, it, it, I think it will be still there. No problem, you know, yeah. but that gives really this um, if there's relaxation coming I 
experience exactly what you say, then there is not this this me bubble yeah. that shrinks. Right. It becomes less power. And that is my experience. There is the own, that's the own only place where it's peace. Right. That's the only yeah. place where it's peace. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's clear, right? <laughs> right. We yeah. can we can produce with a lot of struggle, a lot of trying, uh, momentarily relative peace in the mind, the moment we let go, boom, it's gone. There is no peace of mind in that sense. You become peaceful when you go to the space prior to the mind. And then naturally the mind will be peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, beautiful, Werner. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you this year or 20 or 22. <laughs> Maybe 22. <laughs> Maybe 22. I hope so. Yeah. Have a good time and Suda also. huh? Yes, I will convey to her. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Are you welcome? Are you Mario, Mario. Wish you well. Continue Thank like this. Thank you, Vena. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is there anybody else who would like to talk? Hello, well Werner. Hello, ah, oh, hello, Nelly. Hello, uh, Werner, I, I want to ask one, one thing. Yes. I, I saw one thing in myself, uh, my reac reaction to the sun. I see that uh, when uh, the weather is, um, Mm. Um, when it's sunny, uh, when the there shines. is no sun, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> when I it's see, rainy, uh, when there is no sun, <laughs> yes, uh, when there is no sun, it's rainy or just uh, it's clouds, uh, cloudly. I I don't regret about uh, about it at all. I never regret that there is no sun and never suffer about it. Yeah. But when sun appears, uh, sometimes I feel something, um, some bustle in myself, so that I should uh, immediately run out to the to the out to the outside to the nature so that I can't stay at home anymore mm -hmm. because sun shines so um, so bright yeah and I can't stay uh, in the close close space yeah but sometimes I have some I have to do some practices and uh, I, I do them every morning or I need to do some housework I, and I watch that, or I watch it myself that I do it, but uh, at the same time, I think that I should run away, I, that I miss time maybe, or um, I, I see this, uh, my reaction, that uh, like I don't belong to myself with these thoughts, mm -hmm. like something pushes me out, yeah. All the time. It, it, it's very st strong. I feel it very strong inside. But does it create a problem? I don't like this. Um, mm, I, I don't like this reaction, my reaction on it, because I, it seems to me that I don't belong myself. I can't be quiet doing uh, what I want. Oh, what I, I what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I do some yoga, some meditations, but some some part of my mind thinks that oh, it's so good weather. How can I stay, stay indoors? Cold? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it yes, I see that I it takes me it takes my mind so so much. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, I can see. <laughs> and then you don't like light, right? Then there is a struggle. On one hand, you say, No, no, I have to do this now and to do that. And the other hand, something pulls you on, No, I want to go out. And then yeah. there, 
there is a battle in your mind. <laughs> okay, then when you see it, then you still do what you want to do, what you think is right to do. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> and then that other feeling is also there and that creates a tension. And then don't struggle against the fact that this tension is being created. Then, okay, you said, I don't like it, but of course, of course you may not like it, but then don't fight it, accept, okay. There are these two aspects in me that are fighting with each other and they creating a tension. Then stop thinking, should I, now, should I now continue or should I now go out? Should I now continue or should I now go out? But just watch the tension that is being created in your experience right now, how it is manifesting, what it is doing. Accept that that then that tension is there, except that that contradiction, that fight is there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Energetically, emotionally, that fight is there. One part of you wants to do this and one part of you wants to do the, the other thing. <laughs> and there is that fight. Then just observe what is that fight doing to you? Not so much, should I now listen to this side? Should I now listen to that side? Let both sides be there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want to go and I want to go. <laughs> I want to stay inside, I want to stay outside. Let them be there, both aspects, but see mm -hmm. what they are doing to you right now. Mm -hmm. See how you feel about it. Uh, don't resist against that feeling. Then you become more directly familiar what you are creating and you learn to detach that. And then when you detach that tension that is being created, suddenly the two aspects that brought about the tension, they are both not more so important. Suddenly it's not more so important whether you stay or whether you go out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you can connect with the sun also when you are in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you know that because you say when the sun is not out, when it's cloudy, when it's rainy, when you don't see the sun, there is no problem. <laughs> yes, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> And when the sun is out, because you like to be out in the sunshine, then it seems to be a problem, but it's, it's something artificially created in the mind. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, can accept then, okay, I'm doing now my practice, and still open your heart to connect with the sun. <laughs> okay. But, but anyhow, uh, try to focus your attention on what it is creating, that inner struggle, that tension, that struggle, how it is manifesting, what it is doing to you energetically, physically. And if you don't resist that it's there and let go and relax, then it's wearing out by itself. And then suddenly the two are, uh, you, you smile about it. Go, don't go. <laughs> It's not so important. And then you can do what you feel is right to do. First one and then the other. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You can connect with the sun no matter where you are, whether you see the sun or not. I've been spending once for a long time in my little dark hole and felt very connected with the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes. Anyhow, it's, it's not a big problem, but you can learn that uh, it's not more a problem at all. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, I see. I try to right. do it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hari Om. Hari Om.
Hello. Hello. I hear somebody. I don't see anybody. Yes. Ah, Maya. Yes, yes. Maya, yes. Yes. Hello, Maya. <laughs> How are you? Oh, quite fine. <laughs> this time, this time I'm alone, not with the group. I see. Yeah. And <laughs> um, I wanted to share with you um, uh, what happened, and to see if you have something to say about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, after I came back from last year from India, came a very strong uh, memory of me as a child, but not a memory with a story where I am or what I'm doing. Yes. It's like memory of just a sense of being. Of a being. Pure being. Yes, yes. Your sense of being, yes, and this sense of being is always, uh, always the same. Yes, when I was a child, when I'm adult, when I'm sleeping, when I'm waking, when I'm dreaming, always this, like this background, always there. Yes, and now when I'm watching the trees or even the stones. I feel the sense of being. Ah, wonderful. Of everything. Yes. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just... There is no there is no questions there, no battles, no even not happy or not happy, it's just happiness itself. Yeah. Like yeah. there is nothing else, just this sense of being. Wonderful. Yes. And this is, this comes effortlessly, spontaneously now. Yes. Sometimes uh, it's. Uh, I. I I want to say it's gone, but it's never gone. It's like evolution that it's gone. And uh, this memory helps me to come, to come back. Yes. But actually what you're saying, that as a child you were aware of that and then start, the memory started to come of your experience as a child of that beingness and that memory helps you also yes. now when the connection is not so clear to you remember that memory and there you are again. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yeah, wonderful, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and what you are saying then with, with the trees and even with the stones and you feel that beingness that's just another way of what I'm always repeating, we are not separate. Everything is connected. Everything is the manifestation yes. of that same divinity. <laughs> right. Yes. And you are more yes. more aware of that. That's great. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Verna. Yeah, thank you for your wonderful contribution. It's nice to hear that people are getting better rooted in that. <laughs> Very happy to hear. That's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Is there somebody else maybe one more person before we stop hello verna hello lutz <laughs> yeah i'm uh, quite well these days i have a lot of time for myself and i have not so many challenges and can just uh, enjoy myself. Be a lot of outside. Be be outside a lot and things like that. So, yeah. basically, it's a very good um, 
uh, time to meditate a lot, be very aware and not be distracted to, from all sorts of things. Yeah. But sometimes I feel also uh, the, the universe brings uh, special challenges to me okay. where my kind of uh, inner balance and uh, at easeness is, 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 is being tested. Yes. So in, 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 in this uh, um, context, uh, there's my brother. Um, my brother is in a very difficult uh, situation. He has uh, been just operated um, from cancer. Oh. And eventually uh, there's also more. And eventually he's, he's not uh, going to live so much longer. Yeah. And um, I recently visited him and um, somehow I uh, was in the past, uh, um, I had not such a harmonious relationship with him and I didn't felt so much love uh, for him. Mm. But recently um, somehow I, I opened my heart more towards him and I feel more warmth for him and I'm more forgiving and, and understanding. Yes. But now he's of course uh, full of fear and um, pain and, and, and uneasiness about his life and all these things. So uh, when I went to see him, all this, this energy also came to me. Right. And uh, I felt quite, quite heavy and not at ease. Yes. And uh, somehow it, it also disconnected me from somewhere else or the, the, the kind of the deep peace or something like this. It was like I was um, a cloud of, of heaviness. Yeah. And uh, so. But uh, I, uh, I remembered your advice that we sh that the kind of the key is not to resist such thing and just kind of um, be aware of it, but uh, letting it go somehow, accept it as as what it is, and not kind of hold on to it. Yeah. That 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 is at least I I, I memorized that that was uh, your advice. So I tried that. Yeah. But it didn't really work. It didn't really work. <laughs> in in the in the I mean at first it, it didn't really work. And somehow um yeah, this, this kind of dark cloud was still uh, uh, with me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, now I just resorted to some uh, stupid things like running away from it basically. I went to the supermarket and uh, bought some food. I also felt that somehow this this cloud is also about dying yeah. and somehow it triggered in me to do just the opposite of dying means enjoying life eating yeah. right so so i had this 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 kind of thing anyway i distracted myself from for some time from 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 this uh, uh, heaviness and somehow mysteriously after a while the, the heaviness didn't go away, but something in me changed and I, I kind of like opened up to a s stronger aspect of my personality, which was very different from that of my brother. Mm -hmm. And so in a way it helped me even to, to feel strength. Yeah. And that was kind of very, very, very surprising. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that. And I also wanted to ask you how to deal with such situations. I mean, especially if you have a, a, a close relationship with that person who has this uh, yeah. difficult time, how, how to deal with that energy, how to yeah. um, kind of digest it and I also, I felt maybe I can also take a little bit on it to me from my brother in order to make his life easier. 
but I don't know whether this was a kind of a, a good idea. But I, but <laughs> there, there's something in me that there's something I feel so sorry for him, and so I want to kind of uh, take a little bit from his heaviness in order to make him feel uh, better. Yeah. But in 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 a way, I think also this is a kind of a silly. Uh, silly attitude because maybe I can also not digest his energy and maybe I should just let him have his experience. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, you, I think you get the picture and yeah. maybe you can say something about that in, in general, maybe also. Right. Let me say something first about the first part that you said, <clears throat> that the heaviness was there. And then you did as I'm recommending, and somehow that didn't do much. And then you rather distracted you, yourself, and that did more than uh, trying to confront it like this. Of course, that uh, when I'm saying you have to see what it is doing and, and then relax, it's not that we have to be in it in like in a very serious mood that there is a big work we have to do and but learn to take it not so serious to accept that the moods like this are there like that heaviness that there is there accept okay this is there and then not look at it as a serious job that I have to remove it and because of that uh, when you distracted yourself actually you let go somehow without having that idea now I have to let go but just uh, relax a bit go and eat something and have ha have a little something pleasant for a moment then something detached so nothing wrong with doing that like uh, distracting yourself and f make uh, do something that makes you feel good for a moment it's not that you have to be <laughs> very seriously focused on the task now to remove something that is there but more uh, playful attitude also there as good as it goes and if it's too much for a moment perfectly well to distract yourself in between and sometimes a, a good chunk as you have experienced a good chunk of it disappeared just because of that now why do you feel so much that heaviness? Of course, there is a connection and then there is a lifelong story. And as you said before, it wasn't too easy between the two of you. And subconsciously, there may be also uh, quite some regret about that in you. And so, because you had your own issue to deal with when you confront your brother. That energy, that heavy energy had so much possibility to hook him. Still, I, I mean, if you connect, if you go to somebody who is sick like this, there is that heaviness is there. You will feel it. But why is it sticking so much? Because you have your own issues with your brother's story. And it's good to have a good look at that and forgive yourself and forgive your brother, but forgive also yourself and think it's the past. Now you can connect with him fresh, not <laughs> with bringing the whole old story along with you, which is already a burden, and then that other burden can, comes on top of it. So you say, can I say we, something general how to deal? with such a person. Don't go to such a person and make the situation heavier by feeling very bad that the person feels so, is so sick. But bring your attention back to your own center. Become aware of your aspect in you that is not affected by it. That peaceful joyousness and bring as much as you can of that into the situation. That is better for you, and that is much better for the other person also. Because if we just go there and commiserate, then we are just adding a bit more misery to the existing misery. 
<laughs> yeah, I, 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 and I, I understood that, and yes. uh, I, I was also quite um, rather easygoing with him, and yes. not uh, kind of wallowing in this heaviness he, he is in. Right, but, but still, still it, unconsciously, I picked up the whole yes. enchilada, the, the whole yeah, yeah. <laughs> big thing when when I left him, and right. uh, yeah. And don't think uh, it's your duty somehow to take his burden away from him. You can't. I mean, in order that somebody can do that, they have to have a tremendous subtle insight already. But it's also not your job. Just the fact that you connect is making his burden easier. Mm. The fact, uh, and if you can give him the the feeling that any old crutches and any stuff that is there, it's the past, it's gone. Uh, we need not hold on to that. That will also help him. Oh. Still, you may pick it invariably. You pick up, but then if you don't in yourself not hold on to tensions and contradictions versus your brother, then this stuff will also go much easier. Uh, but you you pick it up, you feel it, then you go out and it's dissipating. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you for your wonderful insight. Also uh, about my my seriousness and uh, that I, I felt actually guilty of Going distracting myself. Nothing wrong of, uh, with that. <laughs> 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 nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. If it helps you. Uh, if a moment of distraction, of pleasant or joyous distraction helps you to let go, to relax more than perfectly well, like, nothing wrong with it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right, Lutz, then we'll stop the satsang right here. <laughs>